Hello everyone, welcome to the Geo Ecologist. I am Dr. Krishnanand and you have been watching my videos on geography, environment and research methodology on my channel, the Geo Ecologist. Now, before going ahead, please do subscribe to our channel as we are going to finish up all the portions of geography relevant to various examinations across India. So, in today's session on settlement geography, we are going to look into the various factors that determine, that affect the settlement patterns across the world and India. So, before we go ahead, don't forget to share the videos and also subscribe to our channel and let's learn now. So now, let's discuss about the various factors affecting these settlement patterns in today's video. So settlement patterns are the ways in which human settlements are distributed across the earth's land. That is important to understand here, that it's basically talking about the distribution of various settlements across the planet and why are they distributed in that particular way, right? So the question to how and why we are going to answer, right? So where people settle is determined by a wide range of factors. It means there is a diversity of factors that is to be understood and not just natural factors, but also some human factors as well, right? So if you observe further here that examining the reasons behind different settlement patterns is one of the important tasks, one of the important aspect to understand the geography of world that we live in. That's why it becomes very important in human geography to incorporate these concepts and factors. So if you observe further that these kind of patterns that we observe in this space, dispersed, linear, nucleated, it's the settlement pattern type, right? Which in detail we are going to learn in the lectures to come, the classification of settlements. But why are these in particular ways located in particular areas? What are the factors that make them dispersed, linear or nucleated? That is what we are going to learn in today's discussions. So let's understand that study of settlement patterns is one of the core aspects of settlement geography. And we have talked about that in nature and scope of settlement geography video as well. And settlements can range in size from small village with a few hundred residents to a metropolitan city. If you remember the hierarchy of settlements, right? So what you observe here that geographers have a role to play. And now what is the role of geographers here? Often study the reasons behind why such cities develop, right? The question is why? So why question can be answered with, with understanding of several factors, right? So what do we do as geographers? We develop the understanding and analyze the factors that lead to the becoming of a large city from a small settlement. How it evolves gradually, what are the factors? So what do you observe? Some reasons behind these patterns are thought of in terms like site, situation, right? So let's understand these words like site, situation, and also talk about the settlement hierarchy. So first let's understand these three words and the associated factors and then we elaborate some other factors as well. So watch the video till the end where we discuss all the factors individually as well, right? So let's first understand site and location. Now the first thing to understand is locational importance of a place, right? So location is the prime location which you observe where physical, infrastructure, economic, all these factors are combined together at that particular location. So why is particular settlement located at that particular place? For example, in Indian context, if you observe, most of North Indian cities are along the banks of river, the major river, right? So why is that location important? What are the factors that make those settlements around that location? Right? So let's understand that site is actual location and it includes physical characteristics of the landscape, right? The physical location where it is exactly located, right? So landforms, climate, vegetation, availability of water, soil quality, minerals, wildlife, and several other factors, which are natural physical factors. These are the site factors. Right. For example, historically, if you observe around the world examples, so New York City, for example, is located where it is because of several site factors. If you observe, right, the river factor and several other locational factors. For example, another site based location, if you observe in Himalayan region is Bhutan. Right. So if you observe that it also created 
challenges for the population itself. Why? Because Bhutan is a very small country bounded from all sides by the mountains. So it's basically like a barrier, right? So located within world's highest mountain range, the terrain is important here, which is rugged and makes transportation difficult, right? Accessibility is difficult. So what happens at one time, which is a natural barrier protects from the outside for several reasons and also becomes barrier for economic progress at the same time as well. So what you observe? Site based factors which are generally the physical characteristics of landscape are very important to understand. Then comes the other word which is situation, right? So if you observe this situation, many times we say in situ conservation, when we say weathering in situ. So in situation, now when we say the word situation, it's always about relative location, right? So place relative to its surroundings, how it is located in relation to other places. Right? So it's a relative term when we say situation. So the words that you need to understand for understanding the situation of a settlement is the accessibility of the location, extent of places connections with another and how close an area may be to raw materials if they are not located specifically on the site. These are certain things to be understood in terms of the situation of a particular settlement. For example, again, let's take the Bhutan situation. Now, Bhutan situation has allowed to maintain its policies of isolation as well, and also highly separated and traditionally religious culture, right? Because it is highly barricaded from all sides, right? So that's what you observe, that it's a traditional economy observed in Bhutan. Now, if you observe the situation, this diagram could be helpful, right? So this is the site, but these are the locational attributes. These these are the situational attributes of the location, right? So connectivity, accessibility, and then there is a scale at local level, at regional level, at global level, how a particular site is connected, right? That's where the role of technology, transport, and scientific inventions have become really important, right? So site and situation. Then there is settlement hierarchy, which we already talked in nature and scope as well, that this is the hierarchy of settlement from isolated to hamlet to village to small town to large town to city to conurbation. Now what you observe here, this is talking about the combination of site and situation alongside other factors of settlements, right? So hierarchy, if you observe, is an order of importance. That bottom is crowded, but there is always a room at the top. So up as you go, it is less crowded, but more diversified, right? So what you observe, there may be thousands of small villages in China, but there are only few large cities like Beijing and Shanghai, right? So what happens when the city grows, right? The bigger settlements are also fewer in numbers, right? But they have more diversity in terms of services, amenities, facilities. That's what you observe. For example, Tokyo in Japan is another good example of megalopolis, right? So there would be less megalopolis in a given country, but more of isolated settlements or villages or hamlets. That's how you observe the settlement hierarchy. So site, situation and settlement hierarchy, the 3S concept is very important in order to understand the factors. Now let's elaborate the site based factors and situation based factors. So what you observe site based factors are listed here and situation based factors are listed here. You can pause the video and you can write it for yourself. The reliable water supply, away from food risk, defense, building material, fertile land, shelter, fuel supply, south facing or north facing, that is called aspect of the thing, then flat land, easy to build on, and then natural harbor. These are site based factors which determine or affect the location of this particular settlement. Then situation based again is a relatively important. So root center, gap town, lowest bridging point of a river, port, minerals for export, right? If it is an industrial township, it's very important. So these are the situational factors, right? Now let's elaborate that because of this huge number of factors, it's important to group them under particular headings. So major headings, if you observe is geophysical under which you have climate and physical and then economic and some traditional cultural factors, right? So how do we understand these factors from this simplified diagrammatic explanation? So if you look into this flow diagram, this is the factor and look into economic factor, climatic factor, physical factor, traditional factors, right? So what do you observe? Economic, far economic factors like 
ports, markets, commercial routes, nodal points, all these factors. Climatic factors are dry point, wet point, shelter, drainage, all these things. Then physical factors like local relief, soil, water supply, resources, ports, right? So all these things are important. And in traditional factors, it's more about the cultural factors, right? So what you observe in traditional factors, that if there is a particular tradition of settling down near the river because of several factors, so we have more of a river valley civilizations all through the planet we observe right so traditional factors are very important or you can say cultural factors and the defense factors right so several other factors you'll find out that these are the factors that dominate in particular region so now let's elaborate the environmental and physical factors first so one of the important area is the aspect one of the important factors now aspect is what it's basically the direction of the slope right so if this is the direction of the slope where sunshine is more obviously this area will have the advantages of sunshine coming onto the slope right so aspect and shelter are two most important factors that we observe in terms of environmental and physical factors right so it relates to direction in which land faces and now if you observe northern hemisphere and southern hemisphere the northern hemisphere the best slopes to locate are those on facing south right they will receive maximum sunshine and best fit for agriculture forestry and several economic activities as well right for human settlements if you see the valley of alps what you'll find that settlements have been located on south facing slope so in northern hemisphere the role of south facing slopes or the importance of south facing slope is very high why because south facing slope receive the maximum duration of sunshine that's very important to understand. Then further, if you observe the slope or the spur line settlements in Himalayan region or any hilly region, you will find out, right? So in lesser Himalayan belt, houses naturally built on spur or jutting out from the hillside. If you observe this spur line settlements, these are the settlements if you observe, more stable settlements. They are well drained. They are dry as well as safe from landslides and avalanches. Right. So there is what you can observe so many spur line settlements. Then further what you observe is the role of water supply. Very important because our entire civilization across the world, if you observe, is all dependent upon water. More of the civilizations have been river valley civilizations. Right. So there you have dry point sites as well as wet point sites. Now, what is dry point and wet point? As the name suggests, dryness is in terms of the away from water point. It means they are on a hill or a mounted place where flooding cannot affect them. But at the same time, wet point sites are usually beside a river, right? So both kind of settlements are found at many places across the world. If you see the Ely, the Cambridgeshire, or if you can observe close to river valley settlements, you'll have so many examples across the world, right? Then comes the size related to water availability. Right. So you can see tank or lakeside settlement, spring side settlement, stream side settlement, riverside settlement, confluence site. Confluence is the meeting point of two river where many settlements are placed and canal side settlement. So these are various kinds of settlements dependent upon water availability. Very important factor. Then if you observe some examples of communications based settlement as well, which we say is the bridging the gap, right? So they are called bridge point settlement, right? They are certain riverine islands across the world. In Paris also, you'll find that these islands make crossing river much easier from this point, right? For example, in India, we have the best example of Majuli Island, the biggest riverine island, right, in Brahmaputra, in Assam. So that's one of the example if you observe here for this kind of settlements. Then if you observe the confluenced kind of settlements, the settlements that is on the confluence of two river, right? So Khartoum is one of the examples. And in India, the most famous is Dev Prayag, if you observe the Bhagirathi and Alaknanda meeting to form the Ganga River from here. And you have this settlement, which is called Dev Prayag in Uttarakhand, right? So this is a confluence site. That's very important. Then further, defense towns or defense-based settlements. Now, defense towns or defense-based settlements very popular in the Middle Ages, the castles, the forts, the constructions. So if you observe many of these kind of settlements, you'll find from the Middle Ages, Edinburgh Castle is very famous. Maoris in New Zealand built their settlements called Pa on the hilltop. And in India, if you observe the Dhankar and several other forts, right, in Maharashtra region you'll find, in Deccan region you'll find, in Himalayan region also we have such example, where these were the vantage points. They had advantages of construction of these forts, which could look into three direction, right, and look into where the enemy is approaching from. So defense settlements, right, this is very important if you observe here. Now, further is sites related to the relief or topographic characteristics. 
right so mesa and butyl structure we have learnt about already in physical geography so mesa site gap site settlements that is in hilly areas you will find many saddles between two hills or gap site right for communication and transportation valley bottom site or narrow valleys of small rivers are also populated many times then what you observe further fort site settlement foot hill and hill slope site settlements right but they also have certain disadvantages for example limited land for cultivation scarcity of water supply remote Remoteness from the main transport and trade lines, right? So the idea was, if it is away from the main valley, main road, it is going to be having some disadvantages as well. Then resource-based settlements, right? So what is resource here? Fuel, building material, food, water, all these things, right? So resource-based settlement is very important to understand in terms of mining area settlements. So in coal mines of South Wales, you'll find tin mines of Cornwall and several large mining projects where many of these settlements in Brazil you can find out as well. Then further if you observe food based, oil based as well as the precious metals based settlement, right? So you can have several examples from the world where oil factor, metal factor, food factor have given rise to several settlements across the planet. So what you observe? There are numerous factors that are called determining factors for these settlements, right? Where site, situation and the hierarchy or the order in settlement is also dependent upon these factors. So we have talked in details about geophysical factors and several other factors as well and various flow diagrams which could be understood and it would be easy to describe which factors are more important in which particular areas of the world. Mountain areas will have different factors which dominate Plain areas will have different factors that will dominate, right? And several coastal areas will have different factors that will dominate. So that is what we need to understand. The context of the factors alongside the shape of the settlement, the structure of the settlement, the pattern of the settlement, right? So in the lectures to come, we are going to learn more on these settlements, their patterns and their types and their classification. So now, when we have learned about the various factors affecting the settlement patterns and various associated topics in today's session, in the sessions to come, we'll be talking more on various types and classification of settlements. So stay tuned, stay safe, keep watching and learning and don't forget to share the videos with others and also don't forget to subscribe to our channel if you have not already subscribed. So all the best wishes.